Here's an example problem using phasor addition. So for this problem, what we're going to do is just try and figure out what a force-lit interference pattern would look like. So the basic idea then is I have light waves. They come through, right? I have this plane wave, and it hits some foil where I have four slits. One, two, three, four. And we're going to assume that they're evenly spaced by a distance d. And then we're going to look off in some direction, in some angle, some angle theta. Call this thing, whoops, that's not a very straight line. All right, some angle theta from the initial direction of the light. And try and determine what the intensity will be on a screen a long distance away at that angle theta. All right? So what we do is we say, well, look, we've got just these four slits, right? And each one is going to emit these spherical waves that diffracts and, and go out and hit our screen. And our screen is a long distance away, so the difference in their distances from, you know, from this one out to that point on the screen or this slit out to that point on the screen is very small. So we expect that they, each one of these slits is going to contribute kind of an equal sized amplitude, an equal contribution. But these small differences in path length will change the phase of the contributions. So if we assume the screen is very far away, these rays that go from each of these slits to some point on the screen are roughly going to be parallel. So what we'll do is we'll draw a little right triangle right here, all right? So from here to the screen, it's the same distance as from here to the screen, and it's just this little segment right here that is different, that is a different path length. And if I call that distance right there s, right, this angle right here is theta, which means that this angle here is theta, and we find that s is just going to be equal to d sine of theta, right? So the difference in phase between this beam and this beam, we'll call that delta phi, that's just going to be s, right? The longer that distance is, the bigger my phase shift is. And I get a 2 pi phase shift for every wavelength of difference, all right? And so delta phi then is just going to be 2 pi d sine theta over the wavelength, all right? That's what delta phi is. And that's the phase shift between this one and this one. But, I mean, I could also draw a triangle here and say, ah, delta phi is also the phase shift between this one and this one. So I might just kind of say, like, relative to this beam right here, right, this beam has zero phase difference because that's the beam I'm comparing everything to. This, this little contribution here will have a phase shift of delta phi relative to that one. This one will have a phase shift of two times delta phi, and this one will be three times delta phi, right? So I can just say, well, look, my resultant wave, when I add them together using complex exponentials, using my phasor diagram, I can say that my resulting wave is going to have some complex amplitude, e to the i omega t. That's just equal to the magnitude I would get from just one alone slit, right? So let's just get the contribution from this slit right here. It's going to have some amplitude, and it's going to be like e to the i omega t. But then the contribution from this slit, it's going to have the same amplitude. We'll call it e naught, e to the i omega t, but it's going to be shifted by delta phi, where this is delta phi, right? And the next one is going to be, have the same amplitude, but it's going to be shifted by two times delta phi, right? And then the last one will have the same amplitude, but it will be shifted by three times delta phi, all right? So what I have to do is add these four waves together, find the complex amplitude, and then find the magnitude of that complex amplitude, right? And then recall that the intensity is proportional to the magnitude of the complex amplitude squared. All right? So that's what I'm going to do. When I draw my phasor diagram, it looks like this, right? So here's my first contribution. The next contribution is shifted by delta phi. The next one is shifted by 2 times delta phi. And the last one is shifted by 3 times delta phi, all right? And then I just have to find the length of that vector, which is the magnitude of my complex amplitude, right? And then my intensity is just going to be proportional to the amp complex magnitude of the complex amplitude squared, all right? Well, it turns out I can do this problem. It's not a big deal, but I can make my life easier if I change how I think about this, if I just offset things. So rather than, so here I've got my four slits, right? Rather than measuring the phase shift relative to this slit up here, what I'm going to do is measure the phase relative to what I would have gotten if I had a slit here in the middle. For this particular problem, I don't have a slit here in the middle, all right? But if I did, all right, 
what I would find was, all right, this phase shift between the middle and this one right here is going to be, um, right, this is going to be d over 2 sine theta, right? And so what I can do is I can look and I can say relative to light going right through the middle, right, the way I define this is, this is the delta phi I found before over 2. So I can say this one is shifted by, uh, let's see, this one is shift here is shifted by delta phi over 2, this one by 3 delta phi over 2, this one by minus delta phi over 2, and this one by minus 3 delta phi over 2. So I took basically the phases I had before and I shifted them all by negative 3 halves delta phi. All right, that's all I did. If I add a constant phase shift to all of my contributions, it won't change the intensity in my interference pattern. All right, and when I do that, why did I do that? Basically what I did is I took my phasor diagram and I rotated everything such that it had this nice symmetry so that what I get in the end is a real vector, right? So that A tilde will be real. Then I don't have to, you know, find the magnitude of it. It just is the magnitude of it, right? So it just makes my life a little bit easier. So basically what I'll be doing is I'll be saying that A tilde e to the i omega t, that's my total wave. That's going to be equal to e naught e to the i omega t. And instead of letting my first one, the, my, the contribution from the top slit, have zero phase, I'm going to let it have a phase of minus 3 halves delta phi. Right, and then I'm going to add the contribution from the next one down, which has now in my new way of doing this, way of thinking about it, it has a phase shift of minus one half delta phi. All right, and then I'm going to add the next one, e to the i omega t. The next one has a phase shift of plus one half delta phi, and then the next one has a phase shift e to the i omega t plus three halves delta phi. All right. Now, that's really nice, it's nice and symmetric, right? So that when I find my A tilde, it'll turn out to be real. And I can take the real and imaginary parts of these, but it turns out, right, when I take the real and imaginary parts of this and the real and imaginary parts of this, the imagined, or sorry, this one and this one, there's some symmetry, right? right? The signs will cancel out and I'll just be left with the cosines. And it turns out, then I just get the cosines, right? The sine goes away, I can write this all as e naught e to the i omega t. I factor out the e to the i omega t and then this term plus this term just gives me two times the cosine of three halves delta phi. And then this one plus this one gives me two times the cosine of one half delta phi. All right. And so there is a tilde e to the i omega t which means that a tilde then is just e naught get rid of the i omega t this thing right there. All right which means that the intensity Right, I, the intensity is proportional to this thing squared, so it's like if I naught is the intensity I would get at some angle from a single slit, then the intensity I get from all of them together is just I naught times this thing squared. Two cosine three halves delta phi plus two cosine one half delta phi, all of that squared. So that's straightforward, right? There's the intensity that I get just by adding these phasors together. Now it turns out when I plot that intensity, it looks like this. I get a principal maximum and two sub-maxima in between each principal maximum. And if you look, the principal maximum has an intensity which is 16 times what you would get from a single slit. And that kind of makes sense, right? If I add four slits together, when everything's in phase, the amplitude is four times what I would get with a single slit. And I square that and I get 16. Wait, where does the power come from? If I have 16 times the intensity from only four slits, well, in between, it's dark, right? And it turns out as a general principle, as you add more and more slits, this enhancement gets bigger, which means you have to have more dark space in between. When we get to the point where we study diffraction gratings, we will learn that by using lots and lots of slits, we can make these principal maxima very, very thin, right? and have lots of dark space in between, which allows us very, very precisely to determine where exactly those principal maxima are, which makes it easier to use interference to do things like determine the wavelength of a laser.